Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Deng. I'm the Higher Education Manager of Strategy and Governance at EIT. And I'm going to be talking you through with a few of my colleagues, um, the higher education offerings that we have at EIT, including what courses we run, a little bit about the structure, similar to what um, Paul Salenza was talking through with VET. And we've also got Hermana Schultz here, who is one of our current students, who'll be giving you a bit of insight into that student perspective, which is very critical and talking about our on-campus uh, delivery and sort of life, it will be Chris a little bit later. So please put any questions that you have in the chat and then we'll have some Q&A at the end as well. So I'm gonna talk through our undergraduate offerings first. So a little bit about the structure before I go into the details is, over here on the right is the AQF qualification levels. So the AQF or Australian Qualifications Framework is a national policy for regulating qualifications in Australia. It's particularly important because it shows you as a student how you can progress through the different levels of the qualifications that are offered. And because it's national, you know that the naming, so the type of course that it is, is standardised across the country. And there's also expectations that um, providers have to adhere to to deliver those kinds of courses. So a bachelor degree on an AQF level seven will be the same offered, you know, same complexity and same kind of um, level of difficulty with EIT as it would be at say university or you know, another provider. So it gives you a really good baseline for what to expect as far as um, you know, where things sit in that hierarchy. So to start with um, our undergraduate courses, we have undergraduate certificates, which are still relatively new to us. The ones that we offer are civil engineering, electrical, engineering foundations, industrial automation engineering, and mechanical engineering. Those are four units in total, and you take all four units simultaneously across one semester. So that semester consists of 12 weeks plus a two week mid sem break and then one week study break at the end and then exams for one or two weeks after that. So you'll only have you know, two to four exams depending on which units you're taking, but they do have exams. It's fairly intensive doing four units at once, but they are a sort of bite-sized sample into the bachelor. So the bachelor degrees, um, we offer civil, electrical, industrial automation and mechanical. And those are at AQF level seven. And those are 27 units, so quite a lot more. Anything, any of the units done in the undergraduate certificates can be used assuming they're in the same stream as credit into the bachelor. So you don't have to take them again if you were to do one and then the other, they sort of pathway up. With the bachelors, it also includes workshop and work experience units, which a few of my colleagues have touched on already and how those integrate with the courses. And that's also really important for the Engineers Australia accreditation, making sure that you have that practical hands-on experience, whether you're doing it in, you know, in campus in Perth or whether you've done it um, you know, with your own professional experience. In the bachelors, you're looking at taking anywhere between one and five units per semester, two semesters per year, same study periods as the undergrad. So you've got 12 study weeks, two weeks mid sem break, study week break, and then exams. So most of our students online tend to be part-time, taking around three units per semester. It takes about five years to do your bachelor's that way. And if you do them full-time, that's four to five units per semester. So that's what most of our on-campus students do, and a few of our um, online students as well. Then you're looking at about three years. I know there's been a lot of questions um, this afternoon about getting credit and recognition of prior learning, and that can certainly be looked at. We have policies on our website about where that might apply. You're always welcome to apply at application um, or to query. If you've done one of EIT's advanced diplomas, there's pre-agreed credit as well that goes, goes into the bachelor's, um, which you don't then have to specifically apply for, it's automatically granted. So we do encourage that students apply for recognition of prior learning for those workshops and work experience units. We know that a lot of our students are working in industry and we wanna recognize that and to allow them to tick those off and say, yes, I've done my 120 or 240 hours of, of work experience in a very specific industry. There's no need for you to do it again, just for the course, although you're of course welcome to go through the process and, and fill out all the, all the paperwork and sign-offs and things like that. But, we definitely encourage you to 
use that sort of life um, knowledge that you have, your, your specific industry knowledge, if you've got it, and put that into the course. So that's the bachelor's and the undergrad certs. Just a quick note on the undergrad certs that they don't at the moment have an AQF level. They were just brought out as part of a COVID kind of reaction from the government. So they haven't been fully integrated into the AQF yet, but they do sit around the same level as a bachelor at the moment. There's a bit of an addendum on the AQF website if you were really curious, but that's roughly where they sit. Now onto postgraduate units, which are level eight of the AQF. So we have graduate certificates first. It's quite a list here, but I'll reel them off quickly. We've got CAD and computational techniques, civil engineering, either structural or structural analysis and design, IA engineering, industrial instrumentation and process control, um, PLC and SCADA, IA and machine learning, mechanical engineering, chemical and process, power system analysis and design, process and thermal engineering, and safety risk and reliability. Now, these postgraduate courses run a little bit differently to bachelors. Instead of doing them over two semesters, you do them over two terms. Each term is 12 weeks, no study breaks. They're very intensive, but you get them out of the way a bit quicker. It's sort of an intensive part-time mode is how we term it. So you do two units in the first term and two in the second term. It's a little bit like block mode, if any of you have come across that before. And it just means that you have fewer units, but you do them quite rapidly. So you can learn that intensive knowledge um, quite quickly. And then it's out the way in six months for the graduate certificates. On to our next ones. We draw our graduate diplomas first. So those are in civil structural, railway infrastructure, electrical systems, mechanical, industrial automation, and safety risk and reliability. Now these are eight units instead of four. So we are now up to still at, oh, still at level eight of the AQF. Same thing, two units in each term, four terms over the year. You can take a reduced load and do say one unit each term. It just obviously takes a little longer. Um, no study breaks and the graduate diplomas make up the first year of their associated master degrees. Now we don't run all of these grad diplomas as masters, for example, safety, risk and reliability which has only just been added to our schedule for 2023. But should we get sufficient interest, we have the ability to run the masters down the track. So it's definitely an option. Um, yeah, worth looking into if you just want to have a taste of the masters and perhaps can dedicate a year to it or a year and a half if you want to space it out um, without having to commit to the full two years of a master degree. So next up, we have our masters which are civil structural, civil railway, electrical, mechanical, and IA. So you've got 13 units all up, two in each term, over eight terms. Minimum is usually two years if you're taking all the units, maximum of five years. Each term, again, no break, so you've got a couple of weeks off at the end of the year, and you don't have exams in masters or any of these postgraduate ones at the moment. Not to say it will never happen, but at the moment there are no exams. You do also have to do the workshop and work experience units for the completion of these masters. There's a couple of extra um, master level work experience and workshop units that are required. But again, we encourage you to apply for RPL if you've got the experience. There is a capstone thesis at the end of the masters, which is pretty important for the degree. And essentially what you're doing at the end is a culmination of your area of interest and you work closely with an allocated supervisor and produce a piece of work that could even lead to publication. Perhaps you go on to your doctorate if you want to, or it can contribute really well to industry. So there's quite a lot of scope in there for academic growth at the end of the masters. Um, if that's something that you're looking at as well. So finally, we've got our Doctor of Engineering, not a PhD, but a Doctor of Engineering. And that is comprised of six coursework units and three research units. So you've got some classes and you've got some which are just researching with your supervisor. And there's options for electives in there as well, which you can take from um, the master's degree, depending on what your doctorate field of interest is. Two units in each term and it takes three years full-time or you know, a bit longer, part-time. There are some full year units in there as well. So it's a little bit different in structure. And then you have your third year as your doctoral dissertation where you 
have to create a significant and original contribution to the body of knowledge. So a really valuable, very focused kind of qualification. And that's your top level of the AQF at level 10. That's all from me. So I'm going to pass over to Jason Gabriel, who is our higher education manager for learning support, who's going to talk through the very integral role that the support officers provide for your journey through all of those different courses. Thanks.